some other teams, his agents advised him because there's only two teams. Why? Because of his attitude. So get up in the podium, play nice, look professional, look like you got some grown up pants on, and maybe we can get you somewhere else because I tell you what, I don't think the two teams that are vying for him are playoff contention teams. I think any playoff contention teams looks at him, looks at his attitude, looks at him on film and says, we're good. We're already a playoff contention team. What the hell we want that issue for? Like, so I think his agent, this is, again, not, I don't have any sources, just looking at it with common sense. This is all set up to get more teams involved because right now his only two options is going from one, one losing organization to the next. That's the way I see it. It's just a bunch of crap. I, I don't see Jalen Ramsey unless he has some sort of epiphany or some veteran gets a hold of him and, and starts to teach him, like, dude, you got the talent. If you would learn how to play this way and this way and this way, you would be unstoppable, and then you could talk and people would, would be backing up the Brinks truck without you having to ask for it. That's how the good players get paid. They don't ask for it. They don't demand it. They don't, they don't bide their way out of town. They work their ass off, make themselves the best all-around player they can be, prove it on the field, and force the team to have no choice but to pay them because if they don't, they're going to go to some other team probably in the division and come back and whoop your ass two times a year. That's the right way to do things. I don't believe in anything. Hey, Dylan, on that defensive side of the ball, how do you feel about um, Steelers trading a first for Minka? Oh, I think it's a great move. Uh, man, watching that... Uh... Watching that Seattle game, and even going back to the Patriots game, I loved Sean Davis coming out of college as a prospect. You know, I thought he was really fast for how big he is, and it can yeah. work. And uh, same with Terrell Edmonds. But those guys are just constantly out of position, and it, it's really showing. I mean, they're taking bad angles on runs. That's how Penny got his long touchdown run there. And it's, it's, it's really hurting their Steelers secondary because, I mean, the past two years, the Steelers have been – I think top two, in fact. So, obviously, the front seven is getting it done. But, man, that secondary is killing them. So, again, the versatile ground. Well, is not Patrick. good. Yeah, apparently not. And that was an interesting pick to begin with. But um, Reach getting by a versatile well. guy like <laughs> yeah, Fitzpatrick, it says two things, right? It says that they're trying to improve. They're, like you were saying, Jay, earlier about um, front offices actually being active and using – the the draft pick, um, the Steelers did that, and they don't usually do that. This they is a bad example of that, it. though, Dylan, because they are not going anywhere. They're eight and eight at best. They're not <laughs> making the playoffs, even for Micah Fitzpatrick. Therefore, they just gave. Away I'm all aboard the top, Rudolph train. They probably a well, top the fifteen point. pick. They're going to need to draft another quarterback. I'm sorry, like. Rudolph is good. He's probably going to be good. He's probably a good stopgap. But you want to go find a franchise quarterback. Nobody believes Rudolph is a franchise quarterback. He's Do you probably, want to bet if they make the playoffs? He's probably Andy Dalton. I don't know, man. He's probably an Andy Dalton-like quarterback where he's above average. I mean, let's be real here. I think like, but I you've think never seen Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah, it's, he's an interesting yeah I love Rudolph. I hear, of this, I hear this every year, guys. Oh, the team is – what the hell are they supposed to say when they don't have a choice? Like, like if they were so confident when Ben – too, you know, when, they, when they're so confident, they, they would have already been trying to move on because let's be real, they're paying Ben a lot of money. He gets well, injured a lot. Steelers – like, they're not that confident in him. It's kind of like Mike McCarthy was super confident in Brett Hundley, too, that he didn't need to go sign any quarterback. And how the hell did that work out? I mean, come on. Well, let's We hear the, this all the time. The Steelers had to go ahead and draft Rudolph like three years ago because of the fact that Ben kept talking about retirement every year. So they wanted to have a, a successor to take it over. They ended up drafting Josh Dobbs to having two chances at it. Dobbs moved on in the trade. But Rudolph was always the guy they wanted. And I was a, I wanted Packers to get Rudolph in the draft because of how big of a fan I was of his tape. The guy is a huge cannon, raw talent. It just needed to be owned. And I, I was a fan of Rudolph from college. I've, I've never had a problem with him. I'm glad he's finally getting the start. I'm all aboard that train. Toot toot. Well, I'm glad you are. Um, I, I, I see it as I'll, I'll wait and see to actually judge him. But my, my hinkling is... You're already judging him. him. I, I'm saying you just, you I'll You just told wait. him he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to do anything. That's I I will wait to completely that's judge him, him and say whether he's crap or not. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not I'm not putting a lot of confidence into a guy that's been in the league for three years and and 
and you just said it yourself. He was in that building. If he's always been the guy, why do you spend uh, the same amount, if not he was drafted a little higher, in draft Dobbs? Like, that draft right there tells me that you're not that confident in this guy. Like, I'm sorry. Like, until I see it on the field, my, my, my history tells me this is just another guy that they like, and then da, 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 and we all like a lot of guys until they get into the actual game. And I'm sure he's got a good skill set, but this like this team really isn't all that great. I this is one of those scenarios where I don't, I just don't believe that making this move and giving up a first round pick for this kid, who by the way is another kid that wanted out of there because he ex- he wants to pick and choose where he plays too. And I know I liked him for the Packers, but that's because the Packers really didn't need to try to have him play anywhere else than where he really wanted to play. And if you had an attitude, they could have got rid of him after this year and let, and gone somewhere else. It would, you know, like they're a different scenario. There's a couple other teams that I felt like he could have went to too, even though. But he's just another kid at his age that thinks, I only want to do this. And if I can't do this, I want out of town and throw in a fit. And, and – Really, he, he wasn't rude him. about it. He, he did. He literally from, said, "All I want is I want to request a trade." He, he didn't come out and smash one anything. Zero and two team to another zero and two team. So how did that work out for him? It didn't work out so well for him. Uh, the the, the Steelers are a lot better talented team than Miami, and they have the same record. Also, going back to Rams there real quick. I oh, hold on, to Jill, I got to bring up something. One second. The okay. three-year okay. argument. The three-year sitting on the bench argument, Jay. I'm going to call you on that because who was the last quarterback that sat for three years and got the start? Our own Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers was the 24th oh. overall pick of the freaking first round, and he was supposed okay. to be number one overall. And, that te- no, whoa, Dave, they, no, no, uh-huh. no, stop. No, that's a bunch of BS. That's the three-round that no, comparison. That is not even close. That's the three Rudolph years. was drafted at the back end of, what, the third round, so basically the beginning of the fourth round, somewhere in there. Like, don't so, give so me was that. Russell Wilson. Yeah, and Russell Wilson was drafted there because he's barely six foot. Like, stop giving me crap so, comparisons. Russell Kyler Murray, Wilson, you know, number Russell one. Will, if Russell, Russell, Russell stop. I watched Russell Wilson at Wisconsin. First of all, I'll tell you this: if Russell Wilson had measured at six one and three quarters, he would have been the number one overall pick that damn year. Well, no, that was the Andrew Luck year. He probably would have went ahead of what, one, two, or three. He would have went two or three right in the first round. But the reason he slid to the third round is because the, back then it was the same thing. If he was in the draft in this, this last couple of years, he would have went number one overall because now we're over the fact of the, the guy's height. The only reason Russell Wilson went in the third round is because he's 5'11 and a half. I watched him at Wisconsin. He has all the traits, and I don't even like Russell Wilson because I think he's a fake ass, but I'm, that, that's a terrible comparison to throw at me, and it's a terrible comparison to throw Aaron Rodgers at me for three years because they were literally drafted. I'm just saying like the comparison for three years picks sitting. Apart, 80-some picks apart, which tells you the difference in overall talent between these two guys. Stop but I didn't it. talk about the draft pick spot. I said how long you sat for you tried to bring up the draft. It's not the same thing. What I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is I did not bring up the draft. Well, you said short guys, and why did Kyler Murray get drafted first? Because He's short. over the short thing now. That's what I just said. I said if Russell Wilson were, if he was coming out this year or, or last year, he would have went number one overall. He's a better overall quarterback than, than well, the last two years. He's a better overall quarterback than, uh, Baker Mayfield coming out of college, and he's a better overall quarterback coming out of college than Murray is. The fact that they were still in this stigma about the size of a quarterback is the reason he went in the third round. Everything else he checked the boxes for. It was all about height, and if he was coming out a few years later, he would have went in the first round at some point. Still sat for three years each. That's what I'm sitting at. Rudolph train, all aboard! (laughs) <laughs> all right Dylan, what do you got for us brother well okay real quick back to the Ramsey thing like I said I would love to know what that conversation was about because in fantasy wise DeAndre Hopkins finished with a very disappointing day so yeah I was sad the problem was even to begin with because uh, Ramsey certainly was doing all he could in that game and uh, I, I think the Jags really need him I mean he throws jerseys he's the reason people even show up 
because they know that defense is going to be there and dangerous and might even win a game for them. So I don't know. I, I think it's going to be interesting. Maybe the Jags really make a serious move at quarterback to uh, keep Ramsey in the building and keep the playoff hopes alive. But you guys covered the Eli Manning benching. You guys covered Breeze, Roethlisberger. I'm not sure you covered uh, Cam Newton. But not yet. We're always going to let that talk about you because that's your fantasy quarterback you drafted. <laughs> that is. And unfortunately, I had to change my name. I had to pivot away from my own starting quarterback. Because it's been awful through two weeks. Sam has zero touchdowns, a couple turnovers, uh, one of few 300-yard performances, but still um, zero rushing yards. And I'm done with Cam Newton. It's time to pivot away. If you didn't already grab Josh Allen, you should have. Uh, and if you're still looking for a hurt on New York. Oh, man, and he's going to put a hurt on Cincinnati this week. I know. <laughs> But some other great matchups. I mean, you can grab Jameis Winston because he is playing New York this week. And Jameis, you can grab Jameis Crab Legs. That's right. And you can grab Brissett, who is going uh, at home against Atlanta. So that should be a nice uh, high-scoring affair. But, yeah, Cam Newton was seen in a walking boot, according to his teammate, Eric Reed, who, I mean, I don't know what they were at. Uh, Eric, apparently, Eric Reed will just say anything because you can just go to him and spout it out. But. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna start calling him Camilla Newton, but how he dresses lately—that's Camilla Newton. Oh man, the stars—he looks straight out of a Tyler Perry movie, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like Big Mama's House Four. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's officially <laughs> Medea. <laughs> but uh, all right, I'm sorry, not, people. <laughs> You saw that growth injury on Monday night with Trevor Simeon and his ankle and getting rolled up on. The, final the Simeon kick. monkey is broken. Yeah, so uh, until Sam Donald makes it back, you can downgrade Robbie Anderson. And, uh, you know, Jamison Crowder didn't see very many targets the other night after a big week one. And, I mean, Lady How do you feel about Luke Falk getting called up from practice squad? And he actually had a decent performance. Yeah, he was all right. And that's the thing about these uh, air raid quarterbacks, right? I mean, Luke Falk is from Mike Leach's system directly at Washington yep. State. And the more Gardner he talks to modernizing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, the more these NFL offenses are integrating college offenses in the game, it seems like these spread offense quarterbacks um, are picking it up a little easier. I mean, you see guys like Baker. And uh, well, obviously Baker's not playing very well right now. But anyhow, you see these spread offense quarterbacks doing a lot better than they were back in the day, right? I mean, Timmy Chang, Colt Brennan, those type of guys didn't exactly succeed. <clears throat> but um, nowadays, with the way the NFL is spreading it out, um, they're actually doing pretty well. So I think Falk will be all right, especially, uh, you know, when Demarius Thomas fully gets in the mix, that's going to help. Um, when Chris Herndon comes back from suspension, that'll be another weapon in the arsenal. So, We'll see. I mean, obviously, you're not looking for him long-term. I mean, everyone's hoping that Sam Donald can <laughs> shake this mono as soon as possible and get back in the ring, so to speak, because the Jets, uh, unfortunately, take on New England this week, and then they get a mercy by week four to rest up. So we'll see how things go week five. I know today it was reported that they're targeting a week five comeback for Donald and company. So all you Robbie Anderson owners, all you Jameson Crowder owners, and even the bell owners can keep your fingers crossed that Darnold comes back week five. Um, Did it not look like uh, Bell was crying on the sideline when he came off the field, like in the fourth quarter after he fumbled? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see that part. I know he put the it, day on. His eyes were red, and there was water underneath yeah. him. And I'm like, "Ooh, is Le'Veon crying over a fumble?" I mean, he's. It's nice to see that passion, right? I mean, for a guy who sat out for a year. It's nice to see him really want to win that game. I mean, he was juking, he was driving, he was running over people. When he lost that fumble, he was clearly pissed off. So that's nice to see for a guy who... Not as easy in New York when you had it in Pittsburgh, Le'Veon. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people thought he would just be lethargic and, hey, I got paid and maybe I'll sit out a couple of weeks. But he's been running tough, man. I mean, Le'Veon hasn't been getting any touchdowns as a fantasy owner, but on volume alone... In a PPR league, you're not happy in the standard leagues, but that's what you get for playing in standard leagues anyway. And uh, uh, PPR <laughs> owners are happy. That's what you get for your punishment. Yeah, I mean, that's why, why would you limit how many points you can score? It just doesn't make sense to me. Even though I do have less than a half PPR, so maybe I shouldn't talk. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You, you just had a really bad run of luck. 
Yeah, you're telling me. 